So, um, so we had a really nice uh, discussion on uh, various aspects of obesity and nutrition in women of the reproductive age group. So I'll quickly summarize what we discussed uh, just now. So while they're setting it up, so the first thing that we discussed was whether there are different standards for when, men and women when it comes to beauty and you know weight uh, standards. So yes, uh, the panel was unanimous in that they said that there are different standards for men and women. These are self-imposed. Several of these factors are also peer pressure related, societal and family norms. So there are several factors in a woman's life who also, which also affects the weight gain throughout the life, life cycle. That is uh, puberty, marriage, marriage related changes in uh, various uh, food habits and uh, practices. Then pregnancy, then also women go through menopause which also results in uh, weight gain. So these are all the factors which are different in men and women and also um, there are also different standards for men and women. Uh, which results in a uh, difference. Now, when you're talking about nutritional counseling in women, so what ma'am said was to tailor the diet to the person who's consuming the food, which is as important as the components of the diet as such. And the other important thing is during pregnancy, don't eat for two. Um, the next thing that we discussed was why obesity was more common in women. So there are several factors. There are certain endocrine issues and certain diseases which are more common in women. And also the treatments that we give related to these diseases uh, might uh, result in obesity, like steroids, contraceptives. So these can result in weight gain. Similarly, women are also uh, joining the work workforce and involving more in shift work, which can affect the weight. And um, post-pregnancy weight retention is another important uh, aspect, which results in uh, obesity being more common in women. So there are also genetic component and a certain so social influences which we discussed. Now, uh, prevention of postpartum weight gain was something that again uh, we discussed and uh, here what uh, ma'am said was the most important thing that we need to do is to encourage breastfeeding for a long duration and to have not just encouraging breastfeeding but also to encourage the lady to have a good dietary practice during breastfeeding in order to gain the maximum advantage from that. And she also said the movement is medicine. So you need to keep moving through the day. And I think that was also discussed during uh, uh, the discussion about uh, physical activity. So movement is medicine. Women also need to be replaced with calcium so that they don't experience body aches and pains and they're able to breastfeed and follow um, this during the postpartum period. Now, we also did talk about the normal weight obesity, which is very important in these uh, times because these people are similar metabolically to obese people. They have a high cardiovascular morbidity and mortality. And this also leads on to the other disease closely related, which is lean PCOS, which is PCOS that occurs in women who have normal weight. And here, the important takeaway was that we probably need to encourage our lean PCOS patients also to lose weight so as to improve metabolically. Now, diet was also uh, discussed in quite uh, detail and as uh, one of the panelists said, diet, a diet is as good as its sustainability and the most important thing to make it sustainable is to make it personalized. So you need to tailor it to a person's uh, requirements and to their lifestyle. Now, we also talked about another important aspect of medications and how they affect weight gain in um, women. So it's not just OCPs, but it's also all medications. We need to look at all our patients' prescriptions and look and assess to see whether there are any medications which result in weight gain. So it's not just uh, uh, OCPs, it's also diabetes medications, uh, medicines for depression, lithium, all sorts of medications, anti-epileptic. So all these can result in weight gain. So we need to go through our prescriptions and figure out what is involved in the weight gain. Now, when you talk about OCPs, it is commonly perceived that they cause weight gain, but there's no strong data to suggest one way or another. The data is contradictory, but though there is some data to point that progesterone probably increases uh, weight gain. So we go away with the message that probably OCPs don't result in as much weight gain as we tend to perceive. So we need to counsel our patients regarding this. Now, when you're talking about physical inertia, um, Sarita ma'am said something nice, that's catch them young. So we need to catch them young and have these measures done at both family and school, where little children are more likely to listen to their teachers than to us. Now, other things, avoid screen time, prolonged sitting, in, engage in cultural dances, and yoga. Yoga has been so, so, said to positively affect both eating behavior, affect the mental status, anxiety, and stress. And all these things would probably help to make a lady more active and involved in uh, physical activity to keep herself fit. 
Now there are certain obesity, uh, so when you look at obesity, uh, the physical indicators of obesity in women, we know that we need to move away from BMI. So there are other parameters which we can use like waist circumference and hip circumference which are difficult to measure uh, in keeping with our uh, social norms and uh, restrictions. So we need to have some easily measurable uh, parameters and it's important because it helps to assess the CV risk. So neck and wrist circumference was discussed and here uh, Dr. Nitin nicely told us that more than 37 centimeter in men and 34 centimeter in women when it comes to neck circumference is high and it indicates the risk of uh, metabolic syndrome and it also gives an indication regarding the risk of OSA. Right now, this was another burning question. So the effects of intermittent and time, intermittent fasting and timed eating. So um, uh, Ms. Shuddha told us really nicely that it circumvents the body's adaptation to calorie restriction by the conventional dietary patterns. However, we need to go back with the message that the weight loss is on par with any conventional uh, diet. And there could be some amount of impact on the menstrual cycles uh, in the study that she mentioned. So we need to be careful when you're uh, using it. It seems to be done in the right manner. So when you're talking about obesity and infertility, uh, ma'am said that yes, there is a risk of infertility associated with obesity and primarily it acts through causing anovulation in women, which is one of the most important causes of infertility. So we need to encourage women to lose around five, if they're obese, to lose five to 7% weight before they undertake pregnancy or any treatment for fertility. Now the EOS was another nice topic that uh, Dr. Neeta nicely elaborated on. So this is important because it not just tells you uh, when you need to treat, it also helps you to prioritize uh, the treatment, which patients need to be treated, and also helps you to assess the patient's readiness to be treated. So there are three parameters and all of them are graded. So I think we need, this is a nice thing that we need to go through and uh, use if possible. Now, when you're looking at medical management of obesity, um, Ma'am Bhuma Ma'am said very nicely that it's not a first line treatment. Lifestyle measures should be always um, insisted on. And we need to assess these patients' response on follow-up and it should be uh, explained to the patient that it's not a long-term solution, but a short-term thing cannot be lose, used for a prolonged period of time. So again, when we talked about strategies to reach the goal weight, we need to set realistic goals and encourage our patients when they achieve them. So with that, I'll come to the end. I hope um, we were able to discuss several aspects of obesity and nutrition in women in the reproductive age group uh, through this talk. Uh, thank you so much.